Hi everyone, this is Kelly and I'm here to do an unboxing of the uh, Sennelier, a 24 pan, half pan uh, set of watercolors that I'm really excited to be getting. I have a lot of paints and I embrace the my love of lots and lots of colors and paints. Most of my paints are Daniel Smith or Holbein, um, which outruns a few M grams which are really high pigmented color, really strong. Uh, you can build up color really fast um, and rich and deep and they're stunning and I love them. However, as I've been uh, working through my um, Oracle deck that I'm working on, I really like some of the processes of sort of building up layers that will leave behind more uh, texture from the layers as well as allow sort of the other colors beneath it to shine through. And I find that that's a little bit difficult sometimes with the highly pigmented colors that I use because it very quickly gets heavy. Uh, so when I was uh, shooting for spring, when I got the texture that I wanted, I ended up uh, having a very heavy picture and rich. And it's, uh, I actually quite like this painting, but it's very rich in color and just wasn't quite what I um, was looking for. Same thing with Autumn, which I absolutely love, but I very quickly started to get um, saturated with color. And so I couldn't uh, add in more layers without uh, becoming really intensely dark, which would lose some of the detail uh, of the painting. And so from what I understand of Sennelier, Sennelier, I'm sure I'm pronouncing it wrong. But what, from what I understand of these watercolors is that they are made uh, for glazing. Uh, so putting thin layers of color and building those up. Can you do this with any uh, watercolor paint? Yes. You can really water down the, the paint and you can build up these, uh, you know, you can do the sim similar things. But uh, Sennelier is, is sort of, that's what their niche is, so to speak. This is what they're known for, where at first when you layer them on, you think, oh, these aren't as vibrant, but their beauty comes out when you um, glaze it in several layers and yet you can still see the luminosity of the color underneath. So you'll often see with Sennelier paints being used for um, um, people who are working with flowers and plants of that nature um, because you can build up these beautiful, beautiful layers that still leave a vibrancy. It is a honey-based uh, watercolor. I do have some M grams, which are also honey-based. Those are really intense pigmented colors uh, as well. Um, and so let's take a look at this. I have opened this up to take a look at it and to get a swatch card prepared. I was really happy to see, okay, now it's it, definitely snugly in the box. I had a difficulty getting it out. I was really happy even though it came in a um, uh, even though it came in a very thin bubble wrap um, envelope uh, and I've seen a lot of unboxing of these where they're all dinged up uh, I was happy to see that this did not have any dings on it which is oh I mean it's going to get there but um, at least for now, they are not. Uh, this is just a swatch card I made up just with the numbers on here. I found that there is room for about 11 half pans turned horizontally uh, in the box, uh, which I intend eventually to, to be able to do. So that's why I've left room for that on the swatch card. It does actually come with this plastic a swatch card that tells you the name, the series, uh, the number, which is uh, um, Sennelier's number. Um, it does not tell you pigment 
or uh, transparency or anything like that. It has the number, Centelier's number, the series that it is, uh, the name of it, as well as that's it. <laughs> so that's what you have there. But that is nice to, you know, to be able to quickly see what you have. Of course, it's going to look very different on your chosen what paper. Uh, this is Arches. Um, um, 140 pound, 100% cotton paper, because that's what I paint on. So you can, so this whole thing can lift out here, and this can come out so that you don't have to leave that in uh, the box. Also, it's nice that you can take this out so that uh, you can just set it in your workspace if you're not going to be using the pan uh, for mixing or you can take it out and have all of the space for mixing so it does give you some options there it does come with a brush uh, which is a of course Sennelier uh, number three round so we'll see you know, I don't, okay, I don't think I have a number three round, so it's good to have. Again, I do intend on um, filling this. So you can see, you can take a half pan and uh, lay it sideways, and you can get about 11 uh, in between here. And so that is my intention um, of doing that. But... Um, but if you want to, obviously, you can get a couple brushes um yeah you know, it's pretty stand it's long enough to do most of your brushes obviously you're not probably going to be able to get a large large brush in there but you can't even get and this is all cracked because i made a fatal error with this beautiful brush but um this is a number 10 so you can get a 10 in there although it's a little more difficult to get out so there we have that um Again, uh, a lot of people complain that this does not stand upright. It does lay flat down. I don't, most of the thing I've heard, it stays fairly nicely in this wells. You also have this for bigger washes, so you would probably use this for more small uh, details there. Uh, I generally am mixing on ceramic, so unless I am out and about, that's not going to much matter to me. Uh, some people have bent things uh, and it, we're able to get it to uh, stay straight. I don't want to bend anything because that's, I don't think, going to matter to me. So I don't intend on bending anything. So it all does close really nicely. It's got the finger ring on the back so that if you are out and about, you can securely hold on to your paints while you are painting. <laughs> so let's pull this to the side and swatch some of these out. Okay, so I've taken the pan out and I have my little swatch card here and I have my water over here. So let's see how this goes. This is a a lemon yellow color. I do tend to go for fairly dark swatches, but I do need to try to leave a little bit of <laughs> light at the bottom so I can see what that's going to do in a real thin wash. So I think what I'll do is get it up here. And then add in some, <clears throat> some water so that can come down. The second color is Indian yellow, and this is Naples yellow deep, which looking at it in the pan uh, seems like that is an opaque color. It almost looks like it has white mixed in it. I have Daniel Smith's Naples yellow that I picked up. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it seemed to be the same uh, as that. This is a French vermilion red. And 
and the next is a bright red. have a Venetian red and then um, Alvarezian crimson to turn my phone off obviously and I obviously got a little red in there from next door, but that's all right. This seems a little bit more like a perline uh, red from Daniel Smith. I don't really see this. Maybe I have, I have to look on the pans and see. Whoops, they have the color grid, they do. So this is 635. Make sure I'm not off here. Which is carmine. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, that's, it's a beautiful color. I quite like uh, Paraline's red, but it has less of a uh, pink tones or blue tones of an Alrizian, uh, although there did have an Alrizian lake, uh, which looked more pink tones, but this looks uh, much more of a red tone. It's a beautiful earthy red, but not what I expected. And that is a carmine. Next is a quinacridone uh, red and then opera. Oh no, I don't think the next one is opera. I think she's... We'll see. <clears throat> we shall see. I guess I should have double checked. This is beautiful, almost a corally color. I've, you know, I've had a hard time mixing uh, this particular color and it's really beautiful. You can see there are definitely a lot of reds. Um, and I do think that a lot of people use these paints for botanical work. And so you can kind of, I think, see that in the amount of red choices that they are, there are. And so that makes sense. This is also something that I want to use them for. So now I know opera pink is considered a fugitive color. So this is not something that has good light fastness at all. It's beautiful for a pop of color, but in terms of having that uh, sit in the sunlight, you're liable to lose that. Next, we have a cobalt violet light, and it's a hue instead of a pigment, and then dioxin purple. And again, just looking at this, it looks almost like there is a white or something that's mixed in with it, which gives it sort of a milky appearance that you sometimes can tell when um, colors have that in there, but it's really beautiful. Holbein has a few like that as well. And this is a very dark color. I have this in core and it is so easy to um, get over saturated because it is such a strong but beautiful purple. Mm -hmm.
moving down here, we have a ultramarine deep. Uh, I don't think Sennelier is yet, um, known for uh, its granulating colors. Um, of course, ultramarine generally does granulate, and you can definitely see it uh, right away. The next one that we have is a Flalo Blue. Is a beautiful, I believe, a staining color, but I am not an expert on pigments. The next one is a beautiful, I have printed out a sheet here uh, so that I can. We have 344 which is a Cenarius blue. I know that I saw that with the Billy Shoal set uh, being used for, again, botanical work. Next up is a forest green. I, I'm one who does use a lot of greens. So some of the ones that I add in will definitely, that's very deep when you put the pup pigment on straight. That may have some black in it. Again, I don't, it doesn't list the pigments on here. I believe in one of the walkthroughs that I saw, uh, it may have been that color that had a black uh, pigment in it. Uh, the next is a emerald. Let's see, 837. I do not have the best eyes on the planet. Eat. 37 is Viridian Green. I'm not a huge fan of Viridian Green. It's such a bright color. I mean, you definitely need to um, mix this for, in my opinion, it's definitely, a, you see it a lot in palettes for the cool tone green, but it's not one of my favorite greens. It's not something I find myself reaching for very often. And the next one is a Lalo Green uh, Light, which is a very bright, kind of looks like in a pan, it looks kind of a yellowy, bright, springy green. I do like to have hookers and sap, usually on my palette. And I do like an olive green. There is a beautiful green earth that looks gorgeous uh sap i would definitely want uh perhaps hookers and, and there is an olive green i do love to use olive green the next color is a yellow ochre That's actually quite lovely. I, I have Holbein and I also have Daniel Smith. And there's a little bit of vibrancy, I think, to this one that I quite like. Uh, we next have Burnt Sienna, which is again a color that I use a lot. I do like earthy tones. I kind of thought this 623, which is a Venetian red, seemed quite <clears throat> Burnt Sienna-like. I just want to see how dark that can get. But they do, it does definitely have more of a red tone to it than the burnt sienna. It's a beautiful burnt sienna. 
I also want to get their quinacridone gold, which looks quite lovely, even though I do uh, absolutely adore uh, Daniel Smith's. And I even like the core quinacridone gold a lot. That's very vibrant. The next is a Payne's Gray, which is a color I actually really love and I don't have right now. I had when I first started my Winsor Newton uh, Professional, when I first got professional watercolor paints, and it was a color that I really like uh, to use. This seems a little less blue, I think, than the Winsor Newton, but it's a lovely gray, and this is a color I like to have. The next is a warm sapia. Sapia is a color I also use a lot of. And that's quite lovely. A lot of times sapia, like Daniel Smith's and Winsor Newton, uh, Daniel Smith's not as bad. Winsor Newton's uh, sapia dries like a rock and crackled mess. You can definitely see the honey uh, working really well here. Um, but that's that's actually I, I do like that Put a little more on top just to see the dark I do sometimes like a real dark sepia <clears throat> Then I have a raw umber The only raw umber I currently have Is an M gram seems very transparent the M gram um, it's a nice color it actually seems like that has a little more granulation than the M gram does and lastly there is a black uh, this is their ivory black I believe that is included as well I'm glad that there's not a white, you know, everybody always complains when there are whites in, um, in watercolor, white and black is kind of, you know, useless because you can mix them, but it is nice to have. I do like to have blacks. I have uh, Daniel Smith Lunar Black. I also, do I have another one? That might be the only, no, I have a whole bind black as well, and I have to say this is really pretty. I don't use it a ton, but sometimes I do like to have a black on the palette. And so that's actually quite lovely. And I obviously. We'll see, I guess how well, I don't know what color that was, but we'll see how well it comes up. And that was pretty dried. It came up pretty good. It seemed like a sapia color or something like that. It seemed like a brown color. <clears throat> and I really didn't work at that very hard. So I'm going to go back. These top row is dry. And I'm just going to put a stripe of a second, you know, glaze down. Just, just out of curiosity since that's something that I do. Um want to do. Again, quite, I'm quite happy with these colors. They're actually uh, much more vibrant on the first pass than I think I would have guessed. Again, there's a lot of reds and pinks, but I think because this is a set, um, this is a brand that is often used for botanical work, that certainly makes sense. Uh, I would have preferred some other greens than these. I do like this. It kind of reminds me of Holbein Shadow, uh, which is a color I really like to use. <clears throat> Uh, but these two are not greens I would have picked, and I'll either swap those out with probably sap and hookers or, um, you know, just kind of replace those in the middle because they're just not colors that I, I use a whole lot. Um, 
from what I understand, I did just recently purchase some Naples, uh, Daniel Smith Naples, because it's not supposed to mix as much with blues in the skies to make a green sky. You can kind of have your blues and your warm uh, sunrises and sunsets. So I'll test that out a little bit, but it is definitely quite uh, opaque. <clears throat> But yeah, I'm actually quite happy with these. We'll see. I'm going to uh, do a little painting uh, later with this and I'll come back and show you that and see, see how it does.